Proudly, we hail. New York City, where the American stage begins. Here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. The presentation today, Black Market Money, is a story of the detectives in uniform who protect the United States Army and its personnel, both here and overseas, from criminal intent. Proudly, we hail the officers and men assigned to military police criminal investigations, Office of the Provost Marshal, Far East Command. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, go! That's the world's most exciting word to a paratrooper. The last thing he hears before hitting the silk. And go is almost the best way to describe the paratroopers, one of the newest, most exciting branches of our army. Men of the Airborne are always on the go. They lead the way with a battle record second to none. Now, if you're between the ages of 17 and 34 and otherwise qualified, this Cracker Jack Army outfit is now open to you. Yes, you can become a paratrooper with all the troopers' special benefits. For instance, that extra $50 a month for paratrooper duty, in addition to regular army pay. And you'll get only the best in training and equipment. When your training's over, you won't need anyone to tell you you're good. You'll know it. Those jump wings and airborne insignia will flash it to the world. Visit your local United States Army recruiting station today. Join the Army paratroopers. Go today. And now your United States Army presents the proudly we hail production, Black Market Money. In those first years after World War II, the United States Army of Occupation in Japan went about the job of bringing peace and democracy to the shattered remains of the land of the rising sun. But although the warlords had been defeated, the army soon found itself facing a new kind of enemy in Japan. This enemy was the black market. Whenever basic items of civilized life, food, clothing, medicines, fuel are scarce, there are always a few men who have them for sale at a price. But even the underworld merchants of the black market have to buy their supplies. And in the first post-war years, the Japanese black marketeers preferred to deal in a currency good anywhere in the world, the U.S. dollar. Japan's economy was threatened. So an order went out to the Provost Marshal Far East Command. The order? Break the black market. My name is Miller. Warrant Officer Daniel J. Miller. I'm a military police criminal investigator assigned to the Provost Marshal's office, Occupation Headquarters, Tokyo. This is case number 3516. It was 1,600 hours on the afternoon of May 17th. An American named James Clark was calling on an attractive woman named Sonia Borovsky. She was a Japanese citizen of white Russian ancestry who lived in the fashionable Shinguku section of Tokyo. Clark was a civilian, but not an ordinary one. He was attached to a special salvage unit of the Army of Occupation in Japan. Yes? Who is it? Oh, just a moment. Oh, Jimmy, darling. Oh, you look tired, darling. You work so hard. Uh, let me fix you something to drink. Now, look, I didn't come here to drink. What do you mean by that? I want some questions answered right now. Why, Jimmy, darling, you're upset. What is the matter? Now, you know what's the matter. I phoned you three times today. You didn't answer once. I want to know why. Oh, no, Jimmy, you know how busy I've been. You're not explaining a thing. Now, start oh, talking. Jimmy, let go of my arm. You're hurting me. Oh, sorry, baby. Just, I'm so nuts about you, Sonia. When you don't answer my calls, when I think I'm losing you, I go off my rocket. Oh, I'm sorry, too, darling. 
No. Sit down and tell me all about it. All about what? Oh, whatever is worrying you. Come on, sit down. There. Isn't that better? Now, I will fix you a drink. Well, there is, there is something that's been worrying me. Mm. Here is your drink, darling. Just the way you like. It is about money, isn't it? What makes you say that? Oh, I'm not blind, Jim. You have been spending a lot of money on me. Too much, perhaps. All those presents, this party. Now don't you worry about me, baby. All I need is a good break, and we're all set. Oh, those are just words, Jimmy. You are a civilian technician. Your salary is not bad, but you know, and I know that you will never be a rich man. And since I happen to be fond of nice things, expensive things... What do you mean? There is no reason why you should not be rich, Jimmy. I know a way for you, for us, to make all the money we want. Now, look, if it's dishonest, I don't want it. Oh, Jimmy, don't be silly. I would never do anything like that. All right, what is it, then? I, I cannot give you all the details now. Why not? I, I have to see somebody about it, but don't worry. It will be all right. I would be awfully grateful to you, Jimmy, darling. Awfully grateful. I think I'll have another drink. 1710. Clark left the Borowski woman's apartment and went to his hotel. 1730, Sonia Borowski left her apartment, took a rickshaw to the Ginza section in downtown Tokyo. On the Ginza, she got out, headed west down one of the side streets. She stopped in front of a small shop that stood between a rundown restaurant and an old Japanese movie theater. The shop specialized in fancy oriental teas and other delicacies. It was run by an Eurasian Japanese named Oshimura. The Borowski woman entered the shop, went straight to Oshimura's office in the rear of the store. So, the beautiful Sonia is here. You are late. Sit down, please. I am just sampling some tea from the new shipment. It is a young ison from Kimon. The little tender leaves from the tip with just a trace of jasmine. Would you care for some? No, thank you. You know I do not like that stuff. Mm. You should try to acquire a taste for fine tea. In Nippon, it is an art. Have you never seen the Chanoyu ceremony? Oh, well, no matter. Have you uh, seen our American friend? Clark, he was with me until a few moments ago. Oh, so uh, good. Uh, will he uh, cooperate? Cooperate? <laughs> I'm sure he will, comrade. Good. The party will be grateful. May 24th, 0900, a week later. I received orders to report to Major Williams, the CO of our Military Police Criminal Investigation Detachment. I met with my partner, Master Sergeant Murray Harris, in Major Williams' office in the Daiichi Building, Occupation Headquarters. Here, both of you, uh, take a look at this map. Yes, sir. These markers show special arrest points. You'll notice that they're all clustered around the Ginza area. Japanese civilians? That's right. Same charge every time. Illegal possession of U.S. military payment certificates. Well, we've run into this before, sir. Yeah, true, but never like this. We had three times as many arrests last week on this charge as we ever had in a week's time before. Bartenders, club operators, basket beggars, street merchants, geishas, rickshaw boys, all kinds of people. All of them with big wads of MPCs. Japanese police are helping in every way possible, but... We know there are plenty more that we don't catch. Well, what do those civilians want with military payment certificates? Only armed forces members and few of our civilians are permitted to use them. What about the color changes, sir? We've been changing the color of that GI money regularly and calling it in for exchange. Anyone who's afraid to turn it in is stuck with it. Well, you're right, both of you. 
As occupation currency, MPCs are good only at certain military establishments. We make it tough for anyone caught illegally possessing them. Well, then what's the deal, sir? Well, there's a group in Japan out to round up all the MPCs they can. Checkups or no checkups. It sounds communist-inspired. Their method of operation is something like this, as best we can figure it. The contact members of the group will offer a GI, say, $125 in Japanese yen for $100 worth of MPCs. Now, there are enough of our boys who don't think twice who sell their MPCs. Then the contact man takes his cut, and the MPCs are passed up the line. How can they make any profit, sir? The whole thing doesn't make sense. Well, it will. As soon as this outfit gets its hands on MPCs, they convert them into a face value amount of U.S. dollars. No more checkups. Then they buy scarce supplies outside of the country with dollars and smuggle them into Japan. Then they sell them at fancy prices. Discredit the whole occupation. They could clean up. As well as make us look ridiculous. Now, sir, uh, how do they convert the MPCs to dollars? Well, we think they have a front man of some kind, an American. Someone who's entitled to handle MPCs or who draws his pay in them. Well, so that means all the armed forces stationed around Tokyo. Not to mention the civilians attached to GI outfits. That's right, Miller. Intelligence has prepared a list of all possible suspects and broken it down into sections. Go to it. I looked at the list. It was as big as a telephone directory. We got busy. We checked out the names in the list, asking questions, looking into any unusual business deals by Americans. No positive results. Reports came in that the black market was starting to boom. You could buy anything you wanted, from rice to penicillin, if you had the money. Meanwhile, the arrests of Japanese civilians and GIs piled up as routine investigation continued. A nightclub operator in the Akuska section was pulled in with $3,000 worth of MPCs in his possession. Two GIs were caught selling MPCs to a Japanese woman. A search showed the woman had $1,500 worth of MPCs in her possession. We rechecked our list, including all the American civilians on it. We checked fingerprints with the FBI in Washington. We questioned all the Japanese we'd arrested. Then, on June 21st, it happened. We got our first break. I got your message, Dan. What's up? We had a call before. A civilian named James L. Clark, engineer technician attached to a salvage unit. He was seen making a deposit of nearly $500 worth of MPCs in his bank account here. Clark? Clark? Yeah, I remember him. We checked him. He gets his pay and military payment certificates and deposits nearly all of it. Well, the bank told me his average balance was never more than around 1500 I think you got a bump tip. I'm not so sure. Oh? You spot anything? We've been working the wrong angle. Clark's average balance is only 1500 But you should take a look at the transactions through his account. As fast as he puts MPCs in, he takes them out. Yeah? He writes checks payable to a bank in San Francisco where he's got an account. The bank in San Francisco gives him full face value credit in U.S. dollars. But why two bank accounts? So he can write checks payable in dollars in San Francisco. Big checks. How big? He's transferred more than $150,000 from his account here during the past month. Wow. That's pretty good for a civilian technician. You're right. It's too good. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Black Market Money. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. For you young men with your eyes on the sky and your feet on the ground, here's the chance you've been waiting for. The Army is rapidly expanding its aviation program. You can now enlist directly for top jobs in the field of aircraft maintenance. Now, this is an exclusive offer. It's open only to graduate aviation repairmen and mechanics. As an aviation specialist, you'll have special advantages. Take advantage of this unparalleled opportunity in aviation maintenance. Your Army service will make you a better repairman or mechanic and it will prepare you for a brighter future in aviation. Visit your local recruiting station today. Find out from the friendly recruiting sergeant how you can better yourself by enlisting in the Army directly for the aviation program. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, 
And now we present the second act of Black Market Money. June 21st, 1100. We started to check further on James L. Clark, the civilian technician. We took a radio jeep and went into downtown Tokyo. We passed the Emperor's Palace and the Imperial Hotel and pulled up outside the big white building where one of the largest American banks maintains a Far East branch. We went into the manager's office. He was a middle-aged man from Los Angeles named Regan. He'd been in Tokyo before the war. Now he'd come back again to his old job. We questioned him about Clark. Nothing much more I can tell you, gentlemen. You have all the information we have about his deposits and withdrawals. Uh-huh. Are you sure there's nothing else, sir? Anything at all? No. That... Well, yes, yes. Now that you mention it, there was something. It didn't sound very important, really. Well, tell us anyway, sir. It's the paper they came in. Paper? Yes. Every deposit made by Clark has been neatly wrapped up in a piece of green paper. Regular little package. Do you have any of this paper, sir? Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. Stiff green paper with little silk threads. Just a second here. Uh, oh, yes, here it is. Clark made a deposit this morning. 500 in MPCs, I believe. Yes, sir. May I see that green paper? <laughs> yes, sure. But I don't know what you're going to find out from a blank piece of paper. I never can tell, sir. We might even find out how an ordinary technician gets hold of $150,000. 11.30. We checked in with headquarters. Orders went out to place the suspect, James Clark, under surveillance. 11.40. We turned the piece of paper we had gotten from the bank manager over to the laboratory. We grabbed a quick lunch at our desks. While we waited for the lab report, we checked Clark's security file. Sonia Borowski's name was mentioned in it. I started to check on her record with the Tokyo police. Then Sergeant Harris went out and came back at 1300 with the lab report. What's the story? Well, the paper's not Japanese, Dan. It's Chinese. Expensive stuff. Mm -hmm. Probably came in from Hong Kong. Where did Stevens get hold of it? Well, they told me this paper's used to wrap packages of a fancy brand of tea. Tea? Yeah, Chinese tea. Special blend. There's only one shop in Tokyo that handles it. A small place run by a guy named uh, Oshimura, near the Ginza. Mm. Funny setup, isn't it? Sure is. Every morning for a month, Clark deposits a bundle of MPCs. Every morning, the bundle is wrapped in that green paper. And the paper comes around packages of Chinese tea. Hmm. Hey, do you suppose Clark has acquired a taste for fancy tea? I don't know. Maybe he's acquired a taste for a lot of fancy things lately. He seems to have the money for it. Fifteen thirty. The suspect, James Clark, was picked up for interrogation. He refused to answer questions about his financial affairs. Fourteen thirty, he was released... An investigator was assigned to follow him. Clark doubled back and forth for a few blocks. Then he headed for the Borowski woman's apartment. Turn that thing off. But, Jimmy, I didn't hear you. You can hear me now. Turn it off. All right. Now, look what you've done. You scratched it. Who cares? It was driving me nuts. What is the matter with you coming in here like this? I was questioned just now by the military police. That's what's the matter. Oh, that's very funny. It is, is it? <laughs> oh. Now you listen to me. There's nothing to laugh about. They've been making arrests all week long. They know something. Don't be ridiculous. It's just routine. It's routine? I tell you, they know. Well, what do they do? What do you want from me? I want out. I'm tired of running all the risks while you and Ashimura sit back and rake in the dough. Oh, no, Jimmy, darling. There is no need to get excited. I'm through, Sonia. I'm finished. No more. Jimmy, Jimmy, darling, listen to me. Oshimura called before. He says he has collected enough MPCs to make one last big deposit. Don't you see, Jimmy? Just one more deposit and we can quit. I will pick it up from him right now. I will meet you at the bank. There is still time. Yeah. It'll never work. Of course it will work. Right after I meet you at the bank, I will go to the airline office. We will fly to Hong Kong tonight, the three of us. We will be rich. We will live like kings. What about Ashimura? Oh, he's an old man, old and tired. He doesn't matter. It will just be you and me. Jimmy, darling. Fourteen oh five. 
the trail was getting hot. Clark left Sonia Borowski's apartment and went to his hotel. He ordered the houseboy to pack his bags. Then he went out again. 1415, Harris and I took up positions in a stakeout across the street from Oshimura's tea shop. 1430, we got the word on our radio that Sonia Borowski had left her place. You think the Borowski dame will hit here? Can't tell. If she does, we'll spot her. Yeah? Oshimura seems to be doing a big tea business in there. Lots of people going in and out. Yeah. But Ashimura's business isn't necessarily tea. Hold it a minute. What gives? Let me have the binoculars. Yeah. Yeah. It's here, all right. Sonia Borowski. Coming down the street toward Ashimura's place. Yeah, I see her now. Ooh, a real dish. She's turning into the shop. Here. Take the glasses, watch the door. I'll check in. 1440. The Borowski woman left the tea shop. She was carrying a large package wrapped in green paper. She headed across town to the bank. He followed her in a jeep. Outside the bank, she met Clark, handed him the package. He made it inside just before closing. We checked with the teller when he left. He had deposited over $100,000 worth of military payment certificates. We checked in with headquarters again. Major Williams ordered Harris to tail Clark. I was to stick with Sonia Borowski. She went to the airline office where she made reservations on the 2015 flight that night to Hong Kong. Then she returned to the tea shop, picked up Ashimura, and went to her apartment. It was now nearly 1600. I contacted Harris by radio. Clark had returned to his hotel, picked up his suitcases, checked them at the desk, saying he would call for them in an hour. It was nearly 1630. Clark arrived at Sonia Borowski's place at 1640. He went inside. I waited downstairs for Harris. I tried to get here as quick as I could. Got tied up in that bridge traffic. Oh, where's Clark? Upstairs. Came in about five minutes ago. Yeah, shall we make the arrest? Not yet. I want to check again with headquarters before we take them. Something doing? Right. The Borowski woman stopped in at the airline office to make reservations on the flight tonight to Hong Kong. That figures? No, we didn't figure all of it. Here's a copy of the reservation order. Notice anything funny about it? Ah, I see what you mean. We'd better contact headquarters and fast. So, Mr. Clark, you have made the final deposit and uh, transfer the funds, yes? The money's on its way to join the rest in San Francisco. Oh, that is wonderful, Jimmy, darling. We're rich. Uh, yes. Uh, now we can uh, conclude our business agreement. Uh, you will write me a check for the full amount. Uh, $300,000, I believe. Uh, with the dollars, we can buy more of the uh, materials for our business enterprise here. When do I get my share, Ashimura? Have you forgotten our agreement? You will be paid in Hong Kong... As soon as we sell the goods bought with these dollars. Oh, this is no time to worry about such things, Jim. Hey, let me fix you something to drink. Why can't I have my share right now? Uh, that is impossible, Mr. Clark. That money represents an investment. Oh, maybe so, but don't forget that it's in my name in the States. I'm the only one who can touch it. That is true, Mr. Clark. But if you try to keep that money for yourself, the military police will be informed of all the details concerning your part in this matter. You wouldn't dare. You'd only lose the money. That is very true. But uh, when you gamble for a high stake, it is, uh, as you say, all or nothing. Here is your drink, Jimmy. Mm, yes. Uh, let us think of pleasant thoughts, Mr. Clark. There will be plenty for everyone. Your share of the money, it is only $100,000 now. When we buy goods with those dollars and sell them to those who will meet our price, your money will increase many times, perhaps to half a million. Think of it, Jim. Half a million dollars. Give him the check, Jimmy. Half a million. Got a pen? There is one in the desk drawer. I will get it. Here it is. Uh, use this table, Mr. Clark, to write the check. Yeah, sure. Three hundred 
thousand. There you are. Uh, thank you, Mr. Clark. You are a man of your word. Now, what about the reservations? Reservations? Sure, the plane tonight. Y you made them for the three of us, didn't you? Oh, oh, I did not know what you meant. Oh, yes, darling, I made them this afternoon. <laughs> you know, I think we ought to have a toast to celebrate. Life is going to be very different. Yes, uh, it will be for all of us. Very soon. What? Who the devil is that? Are you expecting someone, my dear? Oh, no, of course not. I'll answer it. Yes? James Clark. Yes? Military police. Here are my credentials. We'd like to ask you some questions. Police? Now, look here. I, I don't have to answer any questions. I've already talked to the MPs. Sorry, mister. I'm afraid it's pretty important. Now, get out or I'll throw you out. I wouldn't try that, mister. We're not just making a pinch. We're saving your neck. What are you talking about? Don't, don't listen to them, Jimmy. You're supposed to leave with them tonight on the 2015 flight to Hong Kong, all right? Well, suppose I am. I'm a civilian. What's it to you? Just this, mister. You're not scheduled to make that flight. Uh, this is ridiculous. I demand my rights. Pipe down. Go ahead, talk. This woman made plane reservations for Hong Kong, all right. But she only made two. Two? Yeah. One for her, one for Archimura. They were planning on cutting through Hong Kong right into the heart of communist China. You were scheduled to stay, mister. And I doubt if they plan to leave you around to talk. You know too much. It is not true. They're lying to We're not lying. Here's the carbon copy of the reservation slip. See for yourself. Told her I didn't want to do anything dishonest. She said it would be all right. I'm sorry. She was wrong. James L. Clark, Sonia Borovsky, and the tea merchant Ashimura were arrested. Clark confessed. They were tried in a U.S. provost court in Japan. Clark was given a five-year sentence on September 17th at the conclusion of the trial. Sonia Borovsky and Ashimura were sentenced to 15 years apiece. The dollars Clark had collected by transferring his illegal funds were placed in government custody. The arrest and conviction of these three led to other arrests. The illegal traffic in military payment certificates and the black market and scarce goods was broken. If you're a specialist, there's a wonderful job waiting for you in the United States Army. And if you're not a specialist, the Army will give you specialized training in a technical field. There are hundreds of jobs open and ready for you to enlist and take over. Check today with your local United States Army recruiting station. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Army Recruiting Service. This is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to join us next week at this same time for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>